My name is Ella and I am a librarian at the Laurel Branch, which is better known as the Dinosaur Branch. So I've got a dinosaur in the corner as always to help us out today. And today I'm going to show you how I preserve insects. Now I do this as a hobby, so I definitely don't want to market myself as an expert. Uh, I've been doing this for a couple months now and it's something I greatly enjoy. So I'm going to show you a few ways that I go about preserving insects that I find. Um, but before I bring an insect onto the camera, I want to let you know there's going to be a lot of different insects on camera, some arachnids, so if you are squeamish, this probably isn't the afternoon for you, but um, I think they're really fascinating. There are apparently a ton of types of insects in my house, um, and I like to save them when possible, so I want to show you how I do that. So there are a few different ways that I like to preserve insects, depending on the condition that I find them in and what they look like. Uh, the easiest way, I, in my personal opinion, is using hot glue. Now this is a moth that I found, um, and I've used hot glue. Obviously you can see right off the bat that one of the issues is that it is not clear, so you can't really make out the moth. But what I've been able to do is use plastic on the other side. This is an old takeout container and I'm gonna move it close so you can really see the moth on the other side. And this is just really simple, it's kinda of like a guitar pick. And um, this is really simple if you don't have any other tools at home, it's really easy to do. And I think for the amount of effort that I put into it, uh, it's pretty nice. It's not the best way to do it, but again, if you're either in a hurry or not that invested in it, this is a really good way to preserve insects. And um, I like it on this moth. I'm going to bring it closer because you can see the wing pattern. And I think that's really cool. And as weird as it is, because um, it is not fully under the hot glue, you can feel the um, kind of the texture of the wing on the top, which is gross, but also kind of cool on the side. Not so much because the wing is more submerged in the hot glue. But here where it's settled differently, you can feel the ridge of the wing and I feel like this is a really cool feature of this. The only thing with preserving insects like this is it's not very sturdy so you have to be careful not to crunch it. The second way that I preserve insects, which is a little bit more high risk, high reward, um, is in glass jars with hand sanitizer. So this is a glass bottle that I got at a craft store and an insect that I found in one of my um, one of my window sills and then a hand sanitizer inside. So obviously the benefits of this, it's a lot clearer. You can see the insect a lot better. Um, and it's a little bit more portable. You don't have to worry about crunching the insect by mistake. Obviously the, the downsides is that it's a little bit less playable. You have to be careful because the gl if you're using glass, um, it breaks a little bit more easily uh, than a hot glue glob would. Um, and you obviously would have to go buy a container unless you wanted to use something you had at home. Uh, but I think this way is pretty, pretty you know, nice looking. So um, I do recommend this if this is something that you like looking at. The last way that I have experimented with preserving insects is with resin, which you may have seen online. Um, I would say this way is really difficult. I um, I've not had a ton of success in it. But uh, you can see this is one of the attempts I have made in a mold that I got offline for pretty cheap. And I have a, a moth wing and some smaller moths that my friend unfortunately was plagued with in her house. So, um, you know, obviously this is a little bit more resilient than, uh, than the hot glue or the glass bottle. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to break it. I can wear it a little bit easier. The only downside is that resin, I feel, is very expensive. Uh, this is not a very friendly craft to do. The other thing is you can see um, it's a really hard skill to master. Um, I, have a, I have a ton of micro bubbles in this, uh, this piece because I am not super skilled yet with resin and it's really difficult to get the bubbles out. Um, you can try, you know, uh, using a lighter to burn some of them out, but uh, I consider it to be very difficult um, and you can see on the side how uh, some of the, the specimens floated to the top 
um, with a smaller, well, it's not going to focus, uh, with a smaller moss, move it away. Uh, a lot of them, even though they were all set on the same level, um, they dried closer to the surface, which would be this the top part, uh, and the moth wings stayed close to the bottom. So it's just really difficult to master uh, or even to do relatively well. So unless you're really willing to commit time and effort to learning it, I would say stick with one of the other two methods. And I'm going to show you how I do both of them today because um, they're kind of a fun project to do, especially since... The insects are dying now anyway. Uh, the only other thing I want to mention is that I use dead insects. I don't kill any insects. Uh, that's not how I like to make crafts. Uh, but there's plenty of dead insects lying around, so it hasn't been an issue so far. So I'm going to show you first the really easy way with hot glue and some plastic, and then the kind of level two, which is the glass jars. But before I get started with any of that, I'm going to show you the stuff that you're going to need today. Uh, the first thing you're going to need is a container to hold the insects. These are just some kind of like soft containers that I got from the grocery store. And you're going to want ones with lids. Just trust me, you're going to want ones with lids. Um, I like these because they're pretty small so I can carry one in my bag at all times in case I come across an interesting specimen. And I can kind of scoop it up and, and kind of use the lid to get it in there, and then they, they click really nicely and securely so the insect's not gonna fly out in your bag or on your floor or anything like that. Uh, so you're gonna want some of these containers. And again, they, they don't have to be these specific type of containers, but these are really nice to have. Um, and they're, I feel like they're pretty cheap, um, so they work really well. Uh, if you are going to be using the method uh, that uses the kind of hot glue, you are obviously gonna want a hot glue gun, which is currently plugged in, uh, heating up so I can show you how I use it. And then you're gonna want plastic. Now, depending on how much access you have to plastic, I actually will use sometimes this middle piece of hard plastic, um, depending on how big this specimen is. If I don't have anything else around or I don't feel like finding anything else, but you can also use um, plastic takeout containers. Those are really good. So if you save the plastic from those, you can use that. Now, the other thing you're going to want to use, regardless of what method you uh, decide to try, is some um, tweezers. Ideally, the more... Let me try to do the YouTube uh, makeup or method. Um, you're going to want as needle-nosed as you can find. These are pretty flat. Um, but needle nose is a little bit better because you don't get all that surface area and you have less chance of actually crushing the insect. If you can't find tweezers, which I've only recently found those tweezers because I haven't left the house, you can, you can actually use nail clippers in a pinch. Um, you're just going to open them up and then very, very gently, ever so gently, you're just going to use them to pick up the insect. Obviously with the nail clipper method, be very, very careful not to cut off whatever part of the insect you are using. Um, that is very easy to do, but in a pinch, nail clippers will work really well. Now, if you're going to be trying the uh, insect jar with me today, you are going to need a jar. Um, I like to use these little, I believe they were bead organizers. I like to use these little jars that I got at a craft store just because I think they look really nice. But you can use whatever kind of jar you can find as long as it has a top. So here is a container that used to have jelly beans in it that I have saved. It's a thin, um, hard plastic. It's not glass. And it's got a screw top. Um, and I think this would be really good, say, if you had something like flies where uh, there's a ton of them and they all look very similar. You could put them one after another in here, and I think that'd be really cool. If you have a larger specimen, like a cicada or a locust or you know something that's much larger um you can use like jam jars or like salsa jars you can use any type of jar you can find and upcycle um you just don't want to use too big of a container for the insect because it, it's going to look a little ridiculous so you wouldn't want to put say an ant in a jam jar because it's just proportionally it's it's going to look weird um but back to the the jar method you're going to need hand sanitizer which i mean i feel at this point everyone has some um but you're going to specifically want the gel type 
And what that's going to do is that's going to keep your specimen floating kind of in the middle. It's going to keep it suspended. If you use the um, the liquid hand sanitizer, your specimen most likely is going to float to the top regardless of how much time you've soaked it, um, just because it's at that point an exoskeleton and it's probably pretty buoyant. Um, the last things that are really nice to have is a needle or a... Uh, a, a, a paper clip that you've undone and that's just going to be so you can position pu, pu, um, position the specimen in your bottle and then you're going to want a pipette to remove the bubbles i do not have a pipette at home so i made one this is an old uh, sh conditioner bottle from a hotel that i have hot glued this um inside of a pencil to so this obviously isn't the best way to uh, get the bubbles out. It's a little bit um, too big of an opening really for my liking, but I don't have a ton at home and it feels silly to go to the store just for a pipette. So this is what I'm going to be using. So if you see me using this, this is what it is. Um, it's pretty easy to throw together at home. Again, I just hot glued the inside of a pencil to, uh, to this shampoo conditioner. And uh, then you can squeeze it and kind of suck out the bubbles. So that's all you really need to get started. There are some kind of fancy things that I've thrown in, like the jars. You don't need, you know, fancy jars from the craft store. Uh, any jars that you have lying at home will work. Um, you just want to... Regardless of what you use, you just want to be really careful not to crush the specimen. That's really the most important part. So I have a container of insects that I keep on my porch uh, in this little container ready to do preservation work with. And the key for any of the methods is to have dried specimens and you're going to want to leave them, uh, depending on the size of the specimen, anywhere from a few days to a week just to make sure that it's all dried out. So these have been sitting outside uh, on my porch for several days. Uh, the wasp I actually found in a window that's been there since I moved in and I moved in several months ago. The moth is actually pretty new for some reason. My mailbox is full of moths, uh, which included uh, this one. So that's been there for a few days and I left it a day or two in this container more just so it had a little bit more time to dry out. And I don't have any takeout containers right now so I am just going to use the uh, lid of a container, preferably not the one that I use for bugs. So I am going to just put this down and I'm going to grab my tweezers and I'm going to do the moth first. And I'm going to be really careful. I don't want to press down too hard because I don't want to rip the wings, but I also keep not grabbing it. There we go. And it's already kind of dried into a shape already. I mean, I could try to rehydrate it, pin it down, move the wings, redry it out. Uh, but I don't really have that much expertise, so I'm just going to leave it on its side like that. And let me just see what it looks like from the other side. Mmm. That side's probably the better side, so I'm going to flip it so that's going to be the side that I see. And I'm going to put it as close to the middle as possible. And basically, I'm just going to glob a ton of hot glue onto it, uh, trying to make it as even as possible. And I'm going to make sure I get some more hot glue before I start because I'm almost out. And that sounds awful to run out of hot glue halfway through a craft. All right, so I'm just gonna glob the hot glue on there and I'm gonna press down on the new glue stick. Okay. 
and it'll it'll probably run off the edges and you just kind of want to make sure it's as circular as possible so you may have to go around the insect a little just make sure that it's relatively in a decent shape I have to let it settle and then add more and the places that it's the thickest you're gonna want to make sure that you have enough so right now none no oh, you can't even see that right now it's uh, none of it is sticking out and it's this is kind of the hopeful stage really you're like wow it's like pretty clear it's gonna stay that way it's not gonna stay that way as it dries it's gonna get cloudy and you're not gonna be able to see it anymore but uh, you're gonna be able to see the underside and that's the important part so we're just gonna actually probably set this aside for now we'll come back to it uh, at the end when it's had a chance to dry and let's just move on to the other method so for this method it's really important to soak your insects in hand sanitizer i have a cricket in here and a beetle that have been soaking um for about a week you don't need to leave them that long i just have had them lying around and forgot about them uh but you're gonna want to let them soak in hand sanitizer uh just so they all of the air bubbles are released or at least most of them are released and you're gonna want to do this in a container with a lid because otherwise the hand sanitizer will evaporate so i'm going to put those right there and i think I will do the Cricut first. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take your hand sanitizer and you're gonna fill it about halfway. Hold on, that's a little bit more than halfway. And you're gonna just tap it on the table or wherever you're doing your craft and that will get some of the air bubbles out. Perfect. Let's move that here and then you're gonna get your tweezers or whatever you're using as tweezers and you're gonna get your specimen and put it in there you want to be careful because it's gonna be gross and I always put them face down I don't know why um, but you're just gonna to want to gently coax it in there Yes, get in there and then you're gonna get your needle or whatever you're using and push it down a little bit more and then you're gonna get more hand sanitizer and fill it the rest of the way or most of the way again you can tap it on the table or whatever um, to get some of the air bubbles out not all of them Get some of them. All right, so. So you're actually gonna want to leave this maybe overnight. Um, if getting the air bubbles out is something that's very important to you. I am, I'm up in the air. I don't mind some air bubbles. Um, to me, that doesn't ruin the specimen, but you may feel differently. You may not want air bubbles in there, which is fine. So you would leave it overnight to let um, some of the air bubbles escape. And then you would take your trusty pipette slash MacGyvered pipette, and you're just going to remove the bubbles. And this is very difficult to show with one hand. And I'm just going to be putting the extra liquid back in the container. So I'm going to squeeze out to make sure you don't add any air bubbles. And then you're just going to... oh. Suck them up and spit them out. And I'm just going to do this for the bigger ones. Again, I'm not super concerned about the little ones. Oh, see, I added more air. Oh, what have I done? And let's do some of these. Not good about the not adding air part. I 
As you can see, this is extraordinarily tedious, which could be why I don't care if there's bubbles in there because oh, this just takes so long. But, you know, the specimen does look very nice if you are able to get at least the bigger bubbles out. And if you are unlike me and have actual tools, uh, that might be a little bit easier. I see a pretty big bubble on it. I want to remove that, so. And not add more. Trying to see if there's any other super big ones. But the rest of them are pretty small. And they don't really bother me. So I'm going to leave them. So I'm going to get my, let's hold it like that. I'm going to get my needle again and try to move it around a little. I'm going to put its butt a little bit higher. Drag it up. Try to spread its, its legs out just a little bit so you can kind of see the little spines on its, on its leg. I might try to get the antennas. There we go. Let's spread them out a bit. They're not all clumped and you can, I don't know if you can see that, but I have accidentally added uh, a strand of my dog's hair. So, you know, that's unique. That's fun. It is, oh, it's, it is stuck on the specimen. Oh, my dog, why? There we go. Oh, come on. There we go. Just want to get it. I don't know if you can see that, but my dog's hair was in there because my dog's hair is on everything. All right, so I'm going to try to reach in there very carefully and get the other antenna. There we go. Spread it out just a little bit. And depending on how long your specimen has been soaking, it may not want to move terribly much. You know, that's just the nature of, of drying them. Um, it may not be very flexible. The longer you soak it, the more flexible it's going to be. I'm going to move it a little bit more to the center. There we go. All right. So when you're ready to close it up, you are going to get the top and you're actually going to fill it to overflowing with hand sanitizer. So you're going to fill it all the way, there we go, all the way to the top and you're going to tap it on the table again and you are going to put the top on and it's going to flow everywhere and I'm so sorry but you just squish it on there. This is this is an unfortunate part of crafting, you know, there we go. And if you display it with something without a top again, um, it will, the hand sanitizer will evaporate. So try not to do that. There we go. It's a long boy. You can see it's kind of a little bit stuck in the, the cork, but it'll be all right. So yeah. So again, if you were like really worried about it, what you could do is open it up tomorrow um, when it's had time to settle in and remove some of the more stubborn air bubbles. I will not be. I feel like I can see all the parts that I want to see. Um, so I'm going to leave it like that. But this is what it's going to look like when you're finished. And I think while we're still waiting for the first hot glue moth to settle, I'm going to put the beetle in a container as well. All right, so I've got another jar. Oh, got a little dried hand sanitizer in my sanitizer. I'm going to... Fill it about halfway, tap it out, and then, oh no, Ugh, everyone's fine. We're fine. And then I'm going to put the beetle, and this is, I believe, a June beetle? They're pretty common in Maryland. Um, one of the things I really like about preserving insects is that 
I get to learn a ton about them that I might not know before because I'm afraid to go near them when they're alive. So it's really interesting to have kind of the privilege and, and time to, to study them. And again, I don't kill insects just because I that doesn't seem right to me. Um, usually I find them in my windowsills already dead. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna leave him. And then you can see he's got some he's got some big bubbles. So I'm gonna get my hand sanitizer. I'm gonna try to suck them out the best I can. And not add more. All right, I feel like that's pretty good. Again, I'm personally not here for perfection, but I am going to put him a little bit closer to the middle, and I'm going to try to spread his legs out a bit. And he's been sitting in hand sanitizer. A little bit longer than the other one, so he's a little bit more malleable. There we go. So what you can do, if you'd like, is you can super glue, uh, not super glue, crazy glue, cra crazy glue, the uh, tops on so that they stay closed. I actually don't do that method, and it is because I am so new at this, I am never sure if... I've soaked them long enough, and so I'm never sure if a big air bubble is going to form, or, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't uh, dry them long enough, and so, you know, they've got juice in them. I'm never sure what's going to happen, um, so I leave them able to be corked and uncorked, uh, just so that I can make sure that they look really nice always, um, and that is a beginner move I feel. But you can see, I think that looks awesome. You. Can see, and he'll settle in. Um, but I like that he's kind of his body's kind of see through. All right, so we're gonna check in with our other uh, one. It looks good. Uh, you'll know it's dry when it's kind of milky looking like that. And his his bottom did stick out uh, kind of just a little bit. That doesn't bother me. If you want, you can add more hot glue. Um, but the bottom side is the real winner because you can see his wing pattern really well. So what I'm going to do is actually just cut them out. You can also leave them like this depending on what kind of plastic you are using. But I'm going to cut them out. And I don't know, have weird shaped guitar picks or something. Alright, so. Just going to cut around the edges. And I'm going to cut actually at an angle underneath the hot glue so that I don't have any sharp edges sticking out. And you can file um, the edges just to make sure they're not sharp, but I don't handle them that often, so I'm not going to worry about it. Awesome. Alright, so this is what the final product looks like. Again, on the top, it's pretty cloudy. But on the bottom, you can see his wing pattern, which is really nice. You can see his little body. Um, so that's pretty cool to me anyway. Uh, so we've been successful, I feel, in preserving some insects today. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. Definitely let us know in the comments or on our social media if you've tried this. Uh, if so, how they turned out, what kind of insects you're using, what kind of containers you're using. And I would love to see pictures. So you can tag us on our social medias uh, across the platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and that's going to be at PGCMLS. Um, and we have craft reunions all the time. So definitely uh, pop in and see what we're working on. But thank you so much for joining us today. And I can't wait to see what you made.